Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. Thank you so much for watching Progressive Comedy Tour. We're coming to you, Florida, January 9th, Gainesville, January 10th, Orlando, 11 Coral Gables, 12 Jacksonville. Go to GrahamElwood.com. A lot of shows coming. Also, the uh, Stay in Your Lane Comedy Show, December 22nd at the Corbin Bowl in beautiful Tarzana, California. Go to GrahamElwood.com for all of my tour dates. So all of you together can make Gotham great again. Look at it right there. Boom. A little bit of glare from the new light. I don't know how to deal with that. I, You know, I'm used to working in big TV shows where there's like a crew of 50 people handling everything. So we're doing the best we can here. Um, I found this article online. Macron's defeat in Paris sounds an alarm for Europe. So I'm sure you, many of you have been following what is happening in Paris the strike started out just as a gas tax. There was uh, 2,200 coordinated strikes across the country, um, but they've been, they've been going on for three weeks now. And um, Macron has pulled back from the gas tax, but they keep happening because the people there are pissed off. He's a globalist, man. I, and it's, it's really, it's, this, this is a really interesting moment because when Trump won two years ago, everyone was like, oh, you know, the, the, the nationalism and you know, Brexit and Trump and even, even you know, Macron, Macron, whatever, they're all, you know, it's the, people are fighting back and it's like, people are realizing that, like the people that have bought into uh, Trump or, you know, Brexit or, or, or other, you know, right-leaning people or nationalists and all that stuff, they're realizing that they're full of shit too. They're just another version of the globalists who just want to, and everyone's realizing we're all getting fucked over because that's what happened. That's part of the riots in Paris where they, where they kept going because people are like, it's not just, the, the gas tax was just like the, the straw that broke the camel's back. It's way more than that. So here's what, we're gonna go into the details. The link is in the show notes below. Last Saturday, tear gas and cobblestones flew in the same part of Paris as protesters trashed the iconic monument and demanded Macron's embattled government to withdraw a proposed fuel tax increase. For the first time in his presidency, he backed down. Coordinated strikes and protests worked. Huh, weird. Mainstream media is not really covering it here. I'm, I'm sort of seeing little things here and there, like CNN will put stuff on its .com, CNN.com, but I'm actually watching the CNN app on my uh, Apple TV and I'm not seeing much coverage of it. Maybe you guys have, I don't know, but I'm just not seeing a lot of like, and if it is covered, it's covered in sort of a like, ah, oh, what are they protesting over there now? Those Europeans, you know, it's never like, there's a, people are really unhappy because the middle class is getting squeezed out all over the world. For the first time in his presidency, he backed down. It was a humbling moment for opponents of the populist revolts that spawned Donald Trump. The images televised around the world last weekend were the burning cars in the French capital. The retreat by the 40-year-old French leader was mocked by Trump. Macron admitted via his prime minister that he's not been able to connect with the French people. <laughs> it's weird. A former bank guy, a rich former bank guy can't connect with the people. It's weird. A spoiled 40-year-old that's been pampered his whole life, he can't connect with working class people. That's so weird. It's like if you, I don't know, had a president whose dad gave him a million dollars and he's had six different bankruptcies. He's never had to work a day in his life. Or let's say he ran against somebody that ran a foundation that brought in hundreds of millions of dollars. And it's weird. It's almost like the ruling elite of any party in any country don't have a connection to working class people. Like if they, I don't know, they run a campaign and they call them deplorables. And many of them are having a hard time paying their bills. Or you give tax breaks to the wealthy after you said you were going to help them out once you got into office. I don't know. I'm just throwing, I'm just, I'm just, you know, being a libtard. Um, the uh, Trump and uh, Macron and advised that he had been, he can't connect with the French people. No tax merits putting our nation's unity in danger. Uh, Edouard Philippe said in a televised address. At home, his popularity has been sinking. 
hurt by the failure of his early unpopular changes in labor and tax law to revive the French economy. So that's what he was going to do. This, 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 initially, this, this is a, a tax on gas so that they can help pay for infrastructure and stuff like that. But he won't, but he won't tax the rich more. But then now he has to. See, that was the, what he was going to do. I'm not going to tax the rich in, Fran in France. I'm going to put a gas tax on there to tax working class people to make it harder on their lives. You know? As a general rule, I've always been in favor of higher taxes on gasoline to encourage people to get off of it. But in the short run, it really sticks it to working class people. The rich don't care. So... Uh, this is this is intriguing. Um, Macron's policies are seen to favor the wealthy, and poll after poll have shown the French electorate thinks the, the former banker is aloof and arrogant. His approval rating is at 28%, according to an average of seven polling institutes. So that was what was leading up to this. And then the gas tax happened, and then these this organization. Then came the Yellow Vests. This is the organization that... Um, coordinated those first 2,000 protests when this first happened three weeks ago. Coordinated 2,000 protests all over, um, all over France, which is a little bit smaller than Texas. 2,000 protests all over Texas would be amazing. 2,000 protests all over the United States would be amazing. In 2,000 major cities in America, we had protests like that. For Medicare for all. What if we had a 2,000 city Medicare for all protest? We demand it right now. We're shutting things down. You know, and it's, 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 there's no two, this is, you know, Christmas in Paris. It's supposed to be tourists and Christmas shopping and it's hurting. I mean, it's hurting um, regular business owners, which is awful. That, that sucks that that's happening. But look, the, their chain, the Macron is, is, is back down. In the long run, it could be, a, it could be for the better. Um, the Yellow Vests, the grassroots protest movement was sparked by opposition to his environmental policy of hiking taxes on diesel and gasoline to fund incentives to buy cleaner cars and home housing systems. Well, that sounds like a good thing initially, but again, if you're giving tax breaks to the wealthy, this is a, is really hurts working class people. I like the end game of money for diesel and gasoline to fund incentives to buy cleaner cars and, and home housing systems, but why don't we let the, the, why do the rich get a tax break? How about tax the rich and they pay for that? Right? Um, but it's evolved into a widespread anger about the rising cost of living and declining services in rural and small town France. You see how, how this? And so people who think, oh, why are they, it's a bigger issue. It's a bigger issue. And look at America. We're the richest country in the history of the world, which creates our own currency. And this is going to start happening when people don't have basic services and basic things and then things are going to cost more money. They need, you need to revolt. You need to revolt. Let's, let's, let's meet some of the, uh, the people. I want to make sure I, I can hear this. So I'm going to put my uh, crazy little earpiece in. Um, let's, let's hear what some of these yellow vest folks have to say. Um, let's see what these yellow vest folks have to say. Okay. A long way from the Champs-Élysées, these Gilets Jaunes protesters remain mobilized. They've taken over this motorway toll booth and are offering drivers free passage. Free toll. C'est la deuxième fois. J'étais la dernière fois, j'étais l'apprenti. Aujourd'hui, je suis le formateur. C'est bon. Jacques is a teacher at a technical college and one of the group's organizers. 
The gilets jaunes that you see in the streets, they're mainly middle class. And they're being bled dry financially. The wealth gap is getting wider, and we've reached a point where there are the very rich and the very poor, and more and more people are slipping into poverty. It's not about whether we're happy with this, it's about finding a solution. That's the most important thing. <laughs> Retired Gérard is in charge of collecting the tickets. He's stayed well away from the demos in Paris. We count up how much they're worth and photograph it. One day perhaps we'll send the bill to Macron. Chloe and Sabrina have braved the rain and tear gas in the capital. We don't need crumbs. We want the whole baguette. We need to eat. Merci, monsieur. They're not the only ones struggling. Now we're going into a terrible time of year because we can't afford Christmas presents for our kids. I'm 51 and it's like we're going back to the time when my dad gave us an orange and some cheese for Christmas. That's what we're back to. It's terrible. The police haven't intervened, but as they leave at the end of their shift, they tell the protesters it's time to do the same. The Gilets jaunes walk off happy with their haul of tickets. This is the so-called Peanuts roundabout near Montagy, 120 kilometers south of Paris. It's been in the hands of the Gilets jaunes since November the 17th, when protests against the planned fuel price hike began. It's on the N7 highway, which is known as the Holiday Road. People back in the day used to take it on a Friday night to go and spend the weekend in Marseille. We can't do that anymore because it costs 350 euros, so it's impossible when you barely earn three times that much. 350 euros is what it costs, right? So what do we get from our fucking dummies here? Nira Tandon, I don't understand why any progressive is cheering French protests who are amassing against the carbon tax. How dumb do you gotta be? Did you watch that video, Nira? No, you're too busy pushing your corporate bullshit. And in her profile, it says she's a progressive. You're not a progressive. Don't call yourself one. Did you see that? The guy said, it's all middle class people. That toll, how was that? How much was the toll? 350 euros to go to Marseille? Ha! How do you pay that? Can you imagine? Whatever weekend getaway is near you and there's a $350 toll to get there? Not five bucks, maybe 10, all right. 350? And I'm pretty sure the euro, I don't know where, maybe the euro is trading where it's trading in relation to the dollar, but it's still close to three, 350 US dollars, somewhere in there. Might be more, I don't know. That's ridiculous to me. You see what that protest did? And when they interviewed that guy, is this a hassle? The media is trying to get him to say, it's not about whether it's good or bad, it's about what's good in the end. You know, America, we always try to find someone in the news and go, ah, well, they should stop protesting when they give that person a voice because that's what the, the, the ruling class wants you to feel. They don't want you to know. They're not showing this. They're showing cars getting set on fire and stuff, which is also happening in these protests in Paris and stuff like this, but they're not showing this story. I did dig around on the internet to find that story. And then this is what we get from our media. Carbon tax, you don't know anything of what you're talking about. You're supposed to be in the know. I know more than you in my one bedroom apartment being a stand-up comic who just spent the day on the internet. I know more than you do. And she's making millions of dollars a year. And I'm dependent upon your Patreon dollars and nightclub gigs. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand why people who can't pay their bills, why they don't want to pay a higher tax. 
A carbon tax as an idea, sure, but when you pass it on to working class people who are already being squeezed, who can't afford Christmas presents for their kids? This is how out of touch she is. This is how out of touch democratic strategists are. This is how out of touch the corporate media is. When was the last time Neera Tandon worked? When was the last time she had $700 in her checking account and $1,500 worth of bills and couldn't, was trying to figure it out? Is she sitting there going, well, um, when I get my Patreon money and the money I save from my other podcast comes in, I'll be able to pay my January rent. I'll send a check in the mail on like January 2nd or 3rd. It'll get to my manager's office on the 5th or 6th. By that time, all the money will have cleared and I can finally pay rent until I get to my gigs in Florida in January. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not talking about anybody that we might know personally. I'm just, just hypothetically throwing something out there. I'm not, I don't know, talking about my own life or anything like that. Right, that's near a tendon. That's what it's gonna take. Take a page out of France's book. That's what it's gonna take. I don't condone setting cars on fires and stuff like that, but just we're taking control of this toll booth peacefully, but everyone's gonna get in for free. You don't have to pay. Look at that. There's another great strike, the bus drivers in Tokyo because they're so honorable in, in Japan, they didn't want to sh not you know, shut the buses down. So you know what they did? Everyone got on the bus for free. That's how they protested. Because they, they knew if they shut the buses down, they would, there'd be old people who needed medical appointments and people going to jobs and school. It would really make their lives difficult. So they just gave it to them for free. Isn't that brilliant? That's what we need to do. Help each other out. Stick it to the powerful. You know, we're so in told here that like, oh, I gotta protect, I gotta fight for the company. If somebody steals from the company, I gotta, I gotta, no. I gotta be a cop. I gotta nightstick these protesters. These protest, you know, if you're a cop, the protesters are fighting for things that are gonna help you and your family. If you're a cop, you're middle class. Not a lot of millionaire cops out there. This is what we need, man. This is what we need, coordinated, Shutting down of things, letting people do for free. Who would do that? Think about that. They got him to back down, and now he's talking about. I, I read the whole, read the whole article. It's in the show notes. He's talking about. Oh, I gotta repeal the tax break that I was giving the rich. I'm gonna get rid of that now. He was giving the rich a tax break. Oh, now he's and now they're changing his tune. He's scared of the people. Politicians need to be scared of us, not the other way around. So that's what we got to do. Thanks for watching, everybody. And thanks for supporting the show. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood.